Hey guys, it's Jamie here from 3D Scan Store. So in this video, I'm going to show you uh, how I do my sort of lit dev renders using Marmoset Toolbag 4. I want to sort of talk about um, doing all the aspects of the shading, including normal maps, uh, color maps, uh, spec, and roughness maps, which a lot of people ask me about. And for this tutorial, I'm going to be using another one of uh, my friend Eric Sosa's uh, awesome head sculpts. Um, I'm using this sort of crazy, sort of overdriven dude's head here. Um, if you want to check out any of Eric's work, uh, you can go and have a look at his art station here. Um, he does some awesome stuff, loads of sculpts for um, you know collectible toys, miniatures, and comic book sort of artwork. So this is the sculpt itself, um, which has got a few elements here. So we'll just have a quick look at those before we sort of get into the exporting and shading. So the first thing we've got here is the actual head sculpt, which is based on, well, it is one of our head scans that Eric has pushed and pulled around and sculpted onto to make this guy. Um, I've sort of outlined this uh, workflow in a few of our other videos, which you can see on the blog or on YouTube. So with this, all our head textures that are available in our scan store, and um, they all will work on this model because Eric has used that model as a base. So for this tutorial, I'm actually going to be using um, the texture maps from this free head scan that we've got on here. So you guys can kind of follow along with your own models if you want using these textures. I will do some modifications to them because these are actually a little bit old and I do want to update them at some point, maybe do a new head scan. But um, yeah, I'll be using these for the for the tutorial. So what we need to do here, um, the first thing that we want to do is export all of our models as FBX. Um, I like to use FBX because it keeps smoothing groups. Um, you don't get any weird sort of smoothing errors like you do with, with OBJs from ZBrush. So the first thing that you want to do when you're exporting an FBX to Marmoset is get rid of any maps um, and also turn off groups because we don't really want any polygroups going into Marmoset. So the first thing I always do is turn off the texture maps, turn off the groups and also remove the texture from here. If the texture is in there and turned off here, it'll still export the texture map. So I'm just going to go through and do that on all the um, objects in the model. Closing your eyes. Oh, we shouldn't have a map on there. We'll get rid of that. These have got poly paint on them just to make them black, but that doesn't matter. So we'll just turn the groups off. And these are just the, um, you know, the eyebrows and things like that. So now I just export these. I normally just go to export, um, stick them in a folder, FBX, select FBX from here. And as you can see, I've already exported all of these, um, but I'll just show you with the head. So we'll just export it again as Eric head. And then these are the settings that I'm using. Uh, so FBX 2020, smooth normals with smooth normals set to 100%. We're gonna actually be subdividing this in Marmoset anyway. So <clears throat> it's, I mean, you can have it on something like that if you wanted, but I like to have it on 100% because I'm subdividing and it's just, doesn't really make any difference. But, um, and make sure it exports moving levels are selected as well and we'll just hit okay oh so this did have a normal map on it <clears throat> so this will actually export this normal as well which is what i was trying to negate by removing the textures and the groups but it's done it so i don't actually want that on there because it would bring it into marmoset so i will switch off the normal map and we'll just export that again it should be a lot quicker this time yep so I'm exporting these as the lowest subdivision levels, um, level one, basically. And what I want to do for the head is export the normal map because I'm going to want to get some of this nice sculpt detail. And we are going to be using the normal map from this as well. But I'll show you how I actually combine the two maps. So to export the normal for this guy, we'll just uh, click on Tangent, Adaptive, smooth UV and smooth normals and make sure your UV map is set to the highest which is 8k here and then we'll just go normal map and create normal map 
Okay, so once the novel map's finished computing, we'll just click clone novel map and click it here in the texture drop down and we just want to flip it vertically. And then we will export that and we'll just call it do it as a PSD. And we'll just call it normal base. And this is really the only map that I want to export from ZBrush for this whole project, so I don't need maps for any of these items here at all. So we can go into Marmoset now. So this is a completely blank scene in Marmoset Toolbag 4. And I want to load in my exported FBX objects. So I will just click this little import model here, or you can just go to, you know, import model, doesn't matter. And we'll go into our FBX folder and just drag and select everything. So we've got the brows, the head, the eyes, the tear ducts, everything here. Just all in one go. And there we have it in one scene. So at the minute there's nothing going on here. This is just Marmoset's default sort of lighting. There's no ray tracing or anything like that switched on. So we can go into the render and turn ray tracing on. We get some nice shadows and stuff on our model, which is quite cool. So you can see here, this is also made um, shaders for each object that we've imported. So I like to try and keep things quite tidy in Marmoset. So I will just select all these items and make a little folder. And we'll just call it head. Cool. So the first thing that I am going to do is build a little sort of lighting scene, um, a very quick one that we can use just to get some nice bounce light and um, you know, just get it looking a little bit nicer. So I'm just going to do this very quickly actually within Marmoset. So I'm going to use a plugin. I'm going to use the um, generate primitives and we're just going to make a plane. So just click, click add and there we have a gigantic plane. So that's obviously huge. So just press R to bring up the little scale gizmo and we'll scale it down. So what I'm going to do here is make a, a sort of a room um, just to surround the, the character so we can get some bounce light. So we'll call this, uh, we'll make a new material and we'll call it floor. We need to give each one of these surfaces its own name so we can control the color of the the, the walls and the bounce light. Um, and also we want to turn off things like um, reflection. So we just want a nice flat color. And then I'm just going to clone this. So you can either right click and duplicate or you can just press Control and D and then press W to bring up the move gizmo. And just rotate this. This will be the back wall. And we'll call this back wall. So we'll just duplicate this Floor material. Let's drag that on and then just duplicate that again. If you hold Control and Shift, you can actually rotate in increments, which is quite handy to get straight. So we'll just call this over here. This is the left wall. Get that. There we go. So I'll just rename these here as well, actually, just so I know which one's which. Floor. I'll put a roof in as well. So just duplicate this. 
I rotate it around. 180 degrees. Make a new surface. Copy. There we go. And again, just to keep things tidy, we'll put those in a little folder. Let's call it room. And we can sort of scale this up and down now using the folder as a as a null object. So all this does now is give us some nice, nice sort of bounce light rather than just having um, you know, like a white background or a back, black background, just sort of globally illuminating everything. Um, the next thing that I'm going to do is sort of alter the sky and the light a little bit. So this is kind of the basic lighting that I use for pretty much all my kind of renders. Um, it forms a basis for more or less everything. Um, so the sky, I'm just going to go to the presets. And in the skies, I'm going to go to interior. And I'm going to select the uh, churchy one that I like. Where's that? There it is. And currently we don't have a light, um, so we want to put a um, quite like to use quite a big sort of diffuse light. So you can just click here and just put a, a light in that matches the HDR. Um, but as you can see, it's you know it's not positioned particularly well for that HDR. So I'm going to put my own light in. So I'm just going to go to this little light here, and I'm going to use a spotlight. And I'm just going to go to view and show guides and actually switches on the light. I don't know why it's turned off by default. Car alarm going off. So first thing we want to do with the light is set the shape. So we will, we're going to use a rectangle. And I'm just going to change the size to something a bit more realistic rather than like a point. So I think I'm just going to use something like that, kind of like a sort of like a softbox, like a long thin softbox. And I'm going to position that in the top corner of the room. I'm just going to make this room a bit bigger. And then with the light, I'm just going to change the spot angle a bit so it's a bit wider. And then I'm going to actually attach that to the sky. So we're just going to drag it underneath the sky here. So what that means is when I rotate the sky now, holding shift, it will also rotate the light, which is quite handy just for um, you know quickly seeing how things look with from different angles. Okay, so as I mentioned uh, before, we're going to be using the textures from this free head scan to texture this mesh. And um, we're only really going to be using the normal map and the um, color map for these. I'm just going to throw the rest of it away, I think, and I'll show you how to make the, well, we're going to use roughness and uh, spec maps. So the first thing we're going to do is apply the albedo map. So we'll just select our free head scan and just click the color map. Although the color map here that you get supplied is actually 8K. So what I've actually done is downscaled this so that it's, um, oh, sorry, 16K, I've downscaled it so that it's 8K. Um, so we're going to load an 8K version of that, which I've just saved out here, color 8K. And actually this is using the imported shader, so I might make a new shader and just call it head. We'll just get rid of this one. And we'll put color on that one and just drag it on and apply it. Sometimes the imported shaders, they do some weird stuff. So we'll just delete that. Right, so now we've got this, we want to apply the normal map. And as I mentioned before, we exported the normal map from here without any of the skin details, just to get these nice sort of wrinkles and folds in the skin. And um, so I'll show you what happens when we apply that. So this is the normal map we exported before. Oops, wrong one. 
So there you can see we start to get some nice sculptural details. And what we want to do now is use the um, normal map from this guy to um, create all the skin pores and details that match the, the color map. So we can do that two ways. The first way we can do it is we can switch this to detail normals and um, we can actually just apply it as a secondary map. So if we take our um, tree head scan and just apply it there, so that'll actually apply it over the top of the, the other map that we've got, but we actually want to use this channel for a micro displacement a bit later. So I want to combine the normal map from the free head scan with the normal map that we exported from ZBrush. So a really quick and easy way to do that is just to get your two normal maps and just copy the, this is the normal from the, the free head scan, which has got all the nice skin pore details in it. So we'll just select all and we will copy that and paste it over the top of our exported map and just set that to overlay. And now we've got both normals on the same page and we'll just save that now. Save as and we'll just save it over the other. So now we don't, this channel is now free and we've got both the base displacement from ZBrush and the high res skin details from the uh, free head scan on the same map. It's also at this point, it's probably worth sorting out the camera. Um, by default it's on 25 millimeters, so he looks a bit horse face. So we'll use something a bit more in keeping with the portrait photography. So we'll use about 85 millimeters. So the next thing that we want to look at is just applying some basic uh, subsurface scattering. So in the transmission tab here, you've got a choice refraction, subsurface, volumetric. So subsurface is all right in the new Z, um, but I actually prefer the uh, volumetric scattering, it's just a bit more accurate. It does some cool stuff, so you can you know, make your standard sort of jello man. Um, and I think to see this really, the, the spec is a little bit high at the minute. So before we look at any spec maps, we're just gonna sort of turn the, um, well, I guess it's the roughness at the minute, we'll just turn that down a bit just so we can see what we're doing. And also you might notice these weird sort of squares and they kind of correspond with the um, wireframe. I'm not sure if that's an error in Marmoset, but to get rid of it, you have to subdivide the model. So you select the head and you click subdivide and just put it up to, I used to put it on two, that completely gets rid of any of that sort of, those errors. So with the uh, transmission, the volumetric scattering, you just want to find a setting that's, you know, that looks quite good. Um, I usually use something like 1.2. Something like that usually works quite well. You start to get some nice scattering between the, the skin pores. And something you might notice um, is you're going to get like a, quite bright areas around areas where the, um, I'm going to turn these eyes off and stuff a bit just so we can see what we're doing without the, you know, you start to get this quite bright, quite um, intense subsurface. You'll see it more if I turn it up. So what I might do is just paint a little really quick map just to control that. Um, I think it looks all right on the rest of the face. I don't think we really need too many subsurface control maps. The volumetric scattering seems to work really well on its own. So just to be a bit picky, I'm just going to go into Photoshop and I'll just select the color map and I will make it very small. 24. And I'll just make a pure white canvas. Make another layer. And I'm just going to paint on some black around the eyes here. This is just going to tell it not to scatter too heavily around the lids. Or the edge of the lids, anyway. Okay. 
go, just something like that. And these have just only has to, this can be a tiny little map, you know, it doesn't have to be big. It's not like it contains a lot of detail or anything. And we'll just call that scatter map or scatter control. And we'll just put this in here into the scatter map. really seem to be doing a lot. Maybe it's blurring a little bit. What I'll actually do is duplicate this layer and just give it a little bit of a blur. Just expand the edges a little bit. Save that. Doesn't appear to be doing anything. More intense, just duplicate that a few more times. Cool. And we'll just put the back down to somewhere where it looks good 1.2, something like that, quite like. And I'll just put the eyes back in just so we can. Looking quite good. So you can sort of see the scattering working there, you know, around the nose and stuff. You can get the, the light coming through. It looks quite nice and gives it a nice sort of skin quality. Some people like to use this fuzz and stuff, but I really don't like it. I think it, it looks a bit weird, especially around sort of harsh edges like that. It's kind of like a, a light that's got the um, shadow casting turned off. Or ray tracing even. So I never never really use that. Um, the next thing we want to look at is sort of roughly getting the spec and the or getting some base values for the spec and the roughness. So for the reflectivity I'm going to use specular and for the microsurface I'm going to use roughness. So we can just sort of play around with these settings a little bit just to try and find something that would work as a base a base sort of value. Just move the light a bit to try and see how it might look. Yep, yeah, something like that. And then we're going to want to do a clear coat as well. And what that'll do is, so we've, we've defined a kind of a an average overall spec for the face um, and then we want a clear coat and we can use the clear coat to do some so we'll use a GGX and the microsurface will use roughness again and with this what we can do is we can actually make like another layer of spec like a second fong um, oh sorry clear coat reflectivity we want that on specular as well and again we can just sort of define Something that might look good. So you want a kind of a sharper maybe something like that. And I might just tweak the lighting a little bit at this stage. So as I was saying before, you, because we've got these four walls, you can double click a wall or select the shader and we can just sort of change the color of that. So we can get a bit, a bit more contrast into our lighting by turning that up or down. So at the minute it's full white. So we'll turn it down a bit so we've got a bit more shadow on that side of the space. Right, so now we've got them sort of looking okay. The next thing we need to do is look at the actual uh, maps that we're going to create for the specular and the roughness. Uh, the way I normally do this is I sort of make a, a flat map like a, with just a single color. So I'm going to sort of guess um, the color. I think that 
this sort of mid-grey, which is generally what I use for the basis for all my spec maps. It's like 99, 99, 99, do 100, it doesn't matter. Um, so we're just going to save this as our spec map. And just load it here. It's our specular map. That's that's a one there, so that's it looks a little bit harsh to be honest. <clears throat> We're just going to turn these other ones right down. We're going to work on each one individually. So the next thing we need to do is to find sort of a, a color for the roughness to try and you know sort of get it looking like this, but with a with a color. So I'll just probably just um, modify this a little bit so roughness is going to be a bit higher, let's say about there. And I'm just guessing this, to be honest. Um, just save that as roughness. And we'll load it into our roughness map. Cool, so that's not rough enough. Um, so we'll just go in, we'll just tweak this with the, uh, the curves just so we get something that works as a base for the roughness. Oh, sorry, I went the wrong way there. It should be darker. Let's try that. Yeah, we're getting close. So what we're looking for here is something that kind of looks quite good, but just using flat colors, and then we can go in and modify these in Photoshop afterwards. So I'll just open the spec as well at the same time. So we've got both. Um, I think maybe that's a little bit too shiny for a base. We can bring this back in painting later in Photoshop. So we'll drop the spec down a little bit. Just get a map in there, it shouldn't be there. Shiny. Just a tiny bit less. This should be the color that forms the overall basis for the the spec, just that overall general spec that kind of works. One place to look at it really is sort of on the neck. Um, so I kind of look around this sort of area and think, does that look okay without any any Photoshop painting or additions? Um, I'll drop it a tiny bit more. And now for the roughness, uh, I think that probably looks all right, to be honest. Maybe make it a little bit less rough. So I just increase the brightness a little bit. Yeah, so that looks okay, I think, as a sort of a basis. Um, looks like we've got the same color. I've got the same map on each. Uh, Right more, just a little bit the same shader by accident. There we go, that's better. Much better. Cool, so now we've got our um, sort of base colors for our spec and our roughness. We can go in and actually start modifying these in Photoshop. So these are 8K, I made them up. So what we want to do basically is we need a guide to paint on. So we're just going to use the, the color map. I'll just copy and paste that into our spec. So all I'm using this for really, you can make it black and white if you want. All I'm using it for is just to define areas to paint on. So the first thing we're going to look at is the roughness map. So, oops, I've copied that into the spec. Copy into the roughness. So what we need to do here is start painting areas that are going to be um, less rough or more oily. So things like the end of the nose, the lips, under the eyes, bits in the cheeks, the um, ears obviously, and the chin. So because these are symmetrical maps, so usually turn symmetry on Photoshop, put it on vertical. Just to prove that, and make a new layer. And just using pure black, I'm just going to start. Sort of painting on where I think that it's going to be a bit oily. Touch the nose a little bit. Oops. And then I'm just going to use the, the large eraser just to sort of taper that a little bit. There we go. So if we save that now, let's see what that looks like. So yeah, 
you can see here he's got a really really shiny nose which is going to look a bit weird so all we have to do now we'll just name these layers as well just so we can keep track of them and i do every every face every part of the face on a different layer so we can modify it easily so i'll just drop that down so it's not bright you can see we're starting to get a bit more of a highlight on the nose i don't think that looks right but we'll um We'll just leave it like that for the meantime, and then we'll do the same on the lips. Let's call this layer lips. Let's turn the guide layer off and then see what that looks like. So he's got lipstick on, so we will just turn that down a bit. That'll be about the same as the nose. Something like that. It's just rough at the moment. Um, and then we're going to want to do some more. Oops. So I'll probably do a bit under the eyes. Cheeks, sorry. Let's break them up a bit into the nose there. And again, I'll just turn the uh, layer settings down until it looks sort of roughly how I want it. I don't want the cheeks to be too always wacky, so I'm just going to use the eraser brush just to blend things a bit. Let's have a look at that. Oops, in there. And then maybe we'll just do a little bit on the chin. Maybe just a little bit up in the forehead as well. It's often a bit oily in the forehead, so a slightly oilier forehead. And again, I used to colour these in like a sort of solid, solid black colour, and then just fade them with using the um, opacity slider. Maybe just bring that down to the bridge of his nose a little bit as well. So we're definitely getting there. And bear in mind, um, this is you know, a great big spotlight pointing down at him from a couple of meters away, so he is going to be relatively shiny in this situation. And um, again, specs one of those things that's so hard to get right, even if you capture it with like a you know photometric scanner, it's it's still very subjective how bright it is under certain conditions. Um, so you know, doing it this way, you've got a lot of control. You can tweak and you can change things to get it to look exactly the way you want it. Um, oh, and maybe the ears as well. I'll just do this quickly. Just rename that forehead. I'll just do the inner ear because it's going to be a bit, a bit shiny. And don't go mad on the outer ears. Everyone always makes outer ears really shiny. Maybe not that shiny. Blend it in a bit there. And again, just to get a little bit. And 
to put more reflection on those ears. Cool. Yeah, I think that's looking okay. Uh, so the next thing to do is to put a bit of detail into our spec map, um, because currently it's it's not actually picking out any details particularly. You know, the specs the same on the the height of the you know the high point of the bump as it is on the, the lower point. Um, so the way I usually do that is grab the color map, just go onto the spec color that we've got. We want to do two high passes on this, but first of all, we want to completely desaturate it. So I'm just using Control, Shift, Control, and U. And then we want to go to Filter, Other, and High Pass. We're going to do our first high pass on about nine, something like that. Um, and then we're going to do another high pass. Actually, no, before we do the other high pass, let's ramp the curves a bit so we can pull out some more detail. So let's do something kind of like that. Now we want to get rid of this sort of white. So we'll do another high pass. We'll do that really low. Something like that. And then we'll adjust the curves on that one. And we start to get this sort of cool. And I know there's a lot of noise in this, but actually the noise really, really helps because you get this nice sort of super detailed noise between the little pores. And that really helps the the look of super detailed skin. So we'll just do something like this. And then we've got our base spec color, so we'll just multiply this over the top. And then we'll save that as our spec map. And now let's have a look. There you go. So you can see now we're starting to get some nice sort of variation in where the skin is specular, whether it's you know, in the higher or low point of the bumps. And this, because this has actually made the spec quite a bit darker, it's actually darkened down the whole. Um, intensity of the spec, so we could just go in and put a little layer in here. If we wanted to bump it up a bit, just brighten up a little bit. Oh, way too bright. Just that down a bit. Maybe still a little bit too bright. Yeah, something like that. And now if you want to sort of check how your spec looks under different lighting conditions, a nice little trick is to um, create a new sky, go into Photoshop, make a new page, just do 512 by 512, just keep it white and just save it as a white image. Let's call it white. And now in Marmoset, if we turn off the um, room that we've made the boxes. And now we import our white image. Let me just save the scene first. So now we've got a complete 100% global illumination room. The cool thing you can do there is turn this all the way down. Turn off our other light that we've got going on here. I believe that because it cloned the light from the previous one. So turn that down, put a light in there. <coughs> Just turn the brightness up on that light. And now what we can do, we can rotate holding shift, sort of check the how the skin looks, the fresnel, uh, or we can move this light around in here. just to see how everything's looking. It's quite a, quite a cool way of doing sort of, you know, 
like stagey type renders. You can put as many lights in as you want. You, know, you can put another one in just by clicking here. And sometimes with this light, you, know, you can change the diameter a little bit just to increase the, you know, the um, sharpness of the, the shadow. Because normally it's like that, but you can increase it so it's a bit nicer. And this is quite a nice way just to do sort of quick renders for clients and people like that. You know, it's um, just to show off the skin details and things. Actually, looks pretty cool. But yeah, I think it's looking pretty good just with those two maps. So we'll just go back to our original scene. Just turn our room back on that we've made. We just keep that light, just call it light or something. Just keep it switched off. Cool. So now what we want to do is add the clear coat settings. So you don't necessarily need maps for this. Um, you can just do it as a sort of a, just kind of eyeball it with the arm set. You really only want to create a tiny, tiny little highlights second, much sharper kind of foam. Turn it bright so we can see it. I guess something like that. So I think this is still looking a bit too um, shiny, especially on his nose. So because we created all these um, layers in our roughness map, we can just go in and tweak that. I think that nose looks too too shiny to me. So we'll just turn it down a bit. Maybe half. better um, and now what we can do just to sort of make it look a bit nicer is if we go into the main camera we can we can add some post-processing I like to kind of do this because um, it's just makes the whole thing look a bit cooler I might just turn the light up a little bit because it does darken things down a bit So I still feel like he's a little bit too reflective. Um, yeah, he just looks a bit reflective. I guess maybe his cheeks are a bit too high. And maybe under his eyes a little bit. Maybe I'll turn his chin down a bit as well. looking a bit better. Cool, so that's kind of like, um, that's kind of how I set up like a basic skin shader with a basic sort of render scene. <coughs> um, and then if you want to make this look a bit nicer, you can go into your camera, you can turn on your depth of field, and you can start to get some nice, nice depth of field there. I think I might just tweak the um, lighting a little bit here as well. So I'm just going to switch the uh, depth of field off a second just while I do this. And I'll zoom out. And this room, I might make it a bit taller. 
I don't know, I'm going to move this light up quite a bit higher, I think. We switch to the setup tab, we can then kind of see what you're doing here. And use this in wireframe key to modify stuff. So there's some slightly more dynamic lighting that I think just looks a little bit better. There we go, maybe something like that's a bit cooler. So now we can switch on some of the other things that we've got here. We can put on the, um, the eyelashes and um, we'll just make a new material for them. Just drag that over onto the eyelashes model. And I'm just going to make that kind of a sort of a blacky kind of browny sort of color. And then the same with the um, eyebrows. sort of thing looks all right so you can actually see if you've not if you've got loads of things in here that you aren't using um, and you want to get rid of the ones that aren't in use just click just hold control and press delete and it will automatically purge any unused shaders which is quite handy I'm just going to make this light a bit bigger I think So now we've got quite a nice lighting setup. We've got all the skin details from the free head scan. Um, you can use any scan for this um, from the scan store. Any of the retopologized head scans textures will work. If you want to add a tiny, tiny bit more detail, like microsurface stuff, we can go in here. And before we were using this for the secondary normal map, but we can actually use this for a micro normal map. So in the free head scan, um, there's actually this micro normal map, which is just it's just a little map that I made in Photoshop um, and you can apply that over the entire so at the minute it looks like that but we can do this um, oh it doesn't show you here so what we want to do is turn the tiling up so this will cover the whole face with a tiny little map it's quite hard to see and um, see if we can see it let's put it up to about 80 so yeah you can see it here it just breaks up the spec a little bit we can turn the weight up and down. It's just a nice little way of sort of breaking up the, um, the spec on large areas. Let's turn the depth of field back on, have a quick look. Cool, it's looking pretty good. So now I'm gonna have a look at the eyes. Um, and I'm going to use some eye assets from the scan store. So the eyes I'm going to use are actually the eyes that are part of the, um, the HD head scan models. They're also available on the uh, animation ready body scans. Okay, so now we're going to look at the eyes and how to set up the eyes in the shader. So first of all, I'm just going to hide everything else in the scene apart from the eyes and the, the lens models. So this particular setup um, was created by uh, my friend Salim Najebli. Um, you can have a look at his art station here. <coughs> um, he creates a lot of the HD head models for us for the store. Um, so let's first look a little bit at the actual models in ZBrush. So the eyes themselves, we've got the actual um, the lens and the eyeball are the same mesh. Uh, the lens is just ever so slightly larger 
<clears throat> so we haven't got any sort of sunken honey or anything like that. Um, what we're doing is actually using uh, parallax maps to create the impression of refraction um, in real time. So the way we're going to do that is we've got we just turned up the field off so we can see what we're doing. So we've got two models here. Um, so first of all, we're going to select the lenses. So let's just hide the eyes. Uh, left eye. I don't know why that's all the way up there. Let's just put that down here so we can see it. Just sort of organise them a bit. So the lens is basically a single surface. So we'll just make a material called the lens. Put it on both of those. And we're just going to make it black. And then in transparency, we're going to set it to dither. And we're just going to turn that down really low. And now we're going to turn the roughness down really low so it's incredibly reflective or sharp. And we're just going to turn the specular up nice and high. So we've got a nice reflective kind of surface. Um, there's also a, a normal map that comes with the eyes that are part of the HD heads. Um, so we can just use that. And that just gives it, breaks it up a little bit. You can't really see much, but all it does is provide like a, you can't even really see very much on the actual um, normal itself, but it's just a, a very subtle sort of bump that kind of breaks things up and gives you a little bit of subtlety. You can kind of see it here. Um, so that's more or less it for the lens, really. It's very simple. The eye itself, um, let's just switch those on. So we want to actually make the lenses not cast shadows. So we'll just click each lens and turn cast shadow off in Marmoset. And then we can look at the eye. So we'll make an eye map, eye shader, eye. And I will just hide the lenses. We'll just apply this to both the eyes. So we'll just, first of all, we'll just put the albedo map for the eye on, which is just this very simple sort of diffuse eye map that we've got and we want to turn the uh, reflection off on these for the moment so I'll just get the roughness all the way up turn it to spec and turn it down right and I will turn the lenses back on oops so this is kind of where we're at with them at the moment um, as you can see when you turn to the side you know they're just sort of the same geometry with the with the normal map on with the Albedo map on so it looks very odd. So I'll just turn the light up a little bit so we can see these a bit better, what we're doing. So the way we do this is we change the normals to parallax and we're gonna put a normal map, which is the eye normal map, which creates all the, the nice detail. So again, this is looking very strange from the side. You know, we've got some really weird distortion effects created by the um, refraction. And we wanna add a height map now and what this will do this will cheat the refraction. So what we've got here is a, um, so you can kind of see the way this works. We can cheat it to look like it's got refraction. So we're going to use 0 0.05, 0 0.05. And we want the depth center to be on about one. So there you go. You can see from the side now we're getting what looks like refraction on the eyes, but actually we're using the same piece of geometry. And what you can do as well, I mean, this is a little bit reflective, this um, lens at the moment, so we'll just turn the intensity down a little bit, about there maybe. So there's a couple of things still wrong with this. Um, firstly, we want to put a little bit of spec on the eye itself, and also this subsurface scatter needs to be on so that we can sort of, you know, fade out these strong kind of veiny sort of maps that are in the normal. So we'll do the uh, subsurface scattering first. So just in transmission, we'll use vulnerable metric scattering. Oh, hang on. Doing that on the wrong, wrong model, wrong shader, sorry. Transmission, volumetric scattering. And you can see we get this error as soon as we turn it on. And I don't know what this is. It's a problem with Marmoset. Um, it seems to increase the specular of anything that has a normal map on it. So as soon as the normal is applied, it makes this weird 
kind of effect. So the way around that, the thing I normally do is I'll just go in here and I'll grab the eye map and I'll just make a little scatter map that looks like this that basically masks out the center section of the eye. So in the scattering, I'll just use this eye scatter. Made it go very dark. Put it in the mask, maybe. There we go. So you put that into the mask. And that'll actually mask off that center section here from, from any scattering. And now we can just sort of choose our scatter depth. Try and get rid of those quite harsh normals. Just change this to a bigger, bigger view. Now, if we want to add a little bit of spec to the actual eyeball itself, we can go in, um, and this is what I normally do in the reflection, and just add the um, eye spec map that we've got here. So we can see we can add just a tiny, tiny bit of reflection. It just gives it, just brings it to life a little bit more. And that's basically it for the eye setup. Um, it's fairly simple, but a lot of people have asked me about it before. Um, and that's it. And again, these eye textures are available on the scan store with any of the um, HD head scans or the Reads Apologize full body scans. So I can turn the other stuff back on now. And it's a little bit bright because I've turned this light up a little bit. So we've just got these eye wet areas here, which kind of define like a, a waterline around the eyes. So in order to texture those, we do pretty much exactly the same thing as we do with the eyeballs. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to set the transparency to dither and we're going to knock it down. Now we need to set the color to black. Well, let's just keep it on white actually so you can see how it works. And then we're going to use um, this tear mask, which also comes with the eyeballs that are part of the HD head scans. So that's just basically an alpha. And we need to set it to red here because it's trying to use the alpha channel. We want to use the red channel. And you can see what that does <clears throat> is it smooths out the edge, gives it a sort of a smoother edge rather than a, you know, a harsh polygonal line like that. Um, so we'll just knock that down a bit more. And same with the lens, we'll make it black. And then we want to make it very slimy and wet. So we'll turn the roughness right down and we'll change this to spec and we'll turn the spec right up. So that's the nail down a bit. Just turn the, the uh, depth of field off so you can see. I mean, it's quite subtle. It's quite a subtle kind of um, effect. You can't really see it that well. When we can see it, I mean, this is it's quite hard to see in this particular lighting condition. Uh, it's maybe a bit too bright. But what you can do is you can use our little look dev lights that we created earlier. And oops, just turn it slightly. What's happened here? There we go. Yeah, so if we use our quick and easy light, we can kind of see it there. So you can see it's it's creating a kind of a border between the eye and the um, the actual lids, and it's also creating some nice wet areas in the inside of the eyes there. And that's all we do really for the for the eyes. It's quite a simple setup. Um, so I'll just um, do a few sort of quick renders and close-ups of this scene so you can see what he looks like. I'm just going to turn this down so it's nice and dark. Oops. Close that down again. Where's my back wall material gone? It's disappeared. So I'll just do a few quick close-up renders and 
this very, very quickly. So I'm using the RTX um, rendering here in Marmoset, which is a lot faster than the software rendering. I've only got a, um, well, not only, it's an RTX uh, 3070, I think. But yeah, you can see we've got some nice details from the free head scan maps. And if we just turn the um, subset or the uh, depth of field on, you can start to get some nice renders. And again, we can just switch on our our look dev scene. Get some nice shots of the lips and stuff like that just by sort of moving the, the light around in the scene a bit. So this is a really good way just to show off details. And you can add more lights in just by clicking here. Look at his eyes. So that's it really. Um, again, if you've got any questions, um, just send me a message on um, Instagram or Facebook or put a comment in the YouTube comments. Um, I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. I hope it's helpful.